I get this sudden feeling that you wear a wetsuit in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never, I'm never nude. I have jean shorts on at all times. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to the wild world of the Winchester Brothers with five fantastic guests from Supernatural. So, without further ado, let's rev up, baby, and see who we find. Our first guest is an actor and artist whose work includes I, Zombie, The Detour, and The Love Witch. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of the fourth prince of hell himself, Asmodeus. Please welcome Jeffrey Vincent Paris. Hello, everybody. Hey, hey, boss. How are you? I'm fantastic. Doing oh, good. So glad to have you here. Um, I, I, uh, so in getting ready for this, uh, I have become a fan of your artwork. Oh, thank you. It's a really, re really good work. I, uh, I, I, I really like the 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 colors um, on the wildlife ones you've used. Oh, I you. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And uh, as I understand it too, you're uh, pretty active musically as well. Yeah, I am. Yeah, any chance I get it to sit in with a band, I do. Or I usually bring my drums to parties. Just <laughs> a anytime you want to bring out uh, the the bongos, you you have op you have an open invitation to. <laughs> All right, you got it. All right, Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining us. Ah, uh, yep. and next, he's an actor whose roles include State of Happiness, Being Erica, and The Call of the Wild. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of British Man of Letters agent Mick Davies. Please welcome Adam Fergus. Yay! Hey guys, <laughs> good to see you, Potty. How you doing? I am well, boss. How are you in your corner of the world? I'm good. I'm good. I'm back in Ireland at the moment, um, and it's uh, yeah, it's a beautiful evening. Nice and days are getting longer. They're like it'll, 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 by, by the mid mid to the end of June. By the twenty first of June, it'll be right until like eleven o'clock at night. Almost. So it's uh, it's a good time to be in Ireland. Really, it gets like that. Oh wow. Well, maybe ten thirty is out of push, but but like yeah, you know, at the very at the very peak of it, a good a good uh, clear day. It'll it'll stay bright really late. Really it's kind of cool. I need to reevaluate my uh, plans to visit what time of year for Ireland. All right. All right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, Adam, so glad to have you here. Uh, great admire your work. Uh, solid work on Painkiller Chain. Sorry, you broke there a little bit. I saw solid, solid work on, on Being Erica and Call of the Wild. Uh, again, and Call of oh, the Wild. Cool, that was man. Great, great adaption. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Really it, was good, it, was good, it was a good thing to do. Good bit of fun. All a bit of fun. Well, let, let's have. We've some been missing these, next. you know. We've been missing. We've been missing these these uh, these cons. So uh, this is a good way to keep everyone's uh, appetite wetted. Absolutely. As speaking as speaking of which, let's bring out our next guest. She is an actress whose credits include The One Hundred, Smallville, and Painkiller Jane. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Night of Hell Abaddon. Please welcome Elena Huffman. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, they're in the chat room. They're they're cheering. Trust I know. Me. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I know. How are you doing? I'm awesome. I'm so happy to be here. It's nice oh, to see the crew again. Oh, so so glad to have you here. And I, I screwed up. I, I bet you were awesome at Painkiller Jane. Thank you so much for <laughs> for that turn of events. Um, my 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 lady friend at the time was a very big fan of that show and uh, made me a fan as well. <laughs> It was a great show. I'm sad we didn't get to do another season, but you know, like like so many so many uh, scripted television shows, you kind of get what, whatever happens. I don't know. Uh, it's that yeah. showbiz, as we all yeah. as we all know. But uh, Elena, so glad to have you here. So hope what things are everything's well in your corner of the world. Yeah, all good. It's a beautiful awesome. day. Awesome, awesome. Speaking of all good, our next guest is an actor whose roles include Deborah, Rumors, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of British Men of Letters operative Arthur Ketch. Please welcome David Hayden Jones. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hey. Oh, he's keen. That's typical David Hayden Jones. Look at him like uh, big I old just said Adam, he's already roasting me. He's already roasting me. <laughs> yeah, Come on, Davey. Hey, I. I you are the most you are the most formally dressed guest we've ever had at GalaxyCon Live, and that's not a bad thing. From the waist up, from the okay. waist up, only. yeah. That yeah, that that's okay. I, I, I wear my gym shorts for these all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Davey, start typing in like the hockey games and the the sports games and COVID. Fine. You just need that 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 live audience to come in, just like the the, the backward noise. It's just weird in a vacuum. Oh. 
But, uh, or just the cardboard cutouts of people. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Um, yeah, I they, like they, they, they have those yeah. images of people streaming in the background. Jeff, and... Jeff brings his own audience. He's like, oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> Look awesome. at me, put a shirt on. We're a family show. Uh, I love it. <laughs> oh, we, oh, we lost him. Right, he'll be back. Don't worry. We'll just Danny, glad to have you here. Everything is well in your corner of the world. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, just had a beautiful walk this morning, and there was this real sense of maskless individuals really being joyous and friendly. Like it was, LA's not a super friendly town unless they want something from you. But this morning there was genuine community out by the river walk. So it was kind of nice, sort of oh. shoots of warm community and hope coming back and a lightness finally on the city, which is great. So I hope the rest of the world gets there too soon. Uh, indeed, uh, we are in a world where we have uh, some good medical science uh, fixing us up and some improved leadership, and uh, we're getting there. We're getting, we're getting there. And speaking of getting there, he is an actor and director and producer whose body of work includes Doom Patrol, Doctor Who, and Battlestar Galactica. Today he joins us to discuss the role of Fergus Roderick McLeod, later known as Crawley. Please welcome Mark Shepard. Bravo! Bravo! Bravo. I'll leave the tip jar on the side. <laughs> Fair. Mark, how are you doing today, boss? I'm doing good. It's a little bit overcast today, but it's been pretty nice all week. Uh, well, it's so glad it's your to... birthday tomorrow. It is. Happy birthday. Oh, Happy my. Birthday. Is it? I'm all right. You. There's Adam. Hey, Fergus. What the hell you been? Have you been? All right. Well, we have a tradition here at GalaxyCon, if it is indeed birthday. Then let's Who's just go ahead and wish you, as I was wish, Mark, very happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday, sir. Many happy returns. Thank you for joining us uh, this weekend. And if you'd like, I'll, I'll help you blow out your candle. <laughs> there you go. Yay. <laughs> did you make a wish? Yeah, I did, but we're all still here. All right. Well, okay. we, <laughs> we've got eight minutes now. we got a few minutes. I promise we'll let it go as quickly as possible. Mark. Great fan of your body of work, and I was a great uh, admirer and fan of your dad as well, too. So thank you, thank you, so, um, thank you, and thank you all for joining us here today on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. So glad to have you here. As it's again, it's been a crazy year and a half, but uh, we are getting towards the end of it. Then things are getting back to normal, and we're here at GalaxyCon looking forward to hosting you on our physical stages and getting you all back in front of your fans. In the meantime, we have this electronic forum. So glad to have you here. Our team is going through the chat room right now, pulling out questions. In the meantime. I just like to throw this out for you. What was the uh, what was the most memorable day on the set of Supernatural? The day I shot Adam in the head. I beat you to it, buddy. <laughs> that was my most. That was my yeah, most memorable. Me stuff. Funny, you, you beat me to it. it. I took it. You beat me to it, Dave. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I really liked that when was I a got memorable to. Day. Yeah, I got to kick Mark's ass. That was fun. In your freaking dreams. Uh, <laughs> Mark's a giver, guys. Mark's a giver. He's like, I'll, I'll, I'll all, I remember, all I remember is you burnt to a crisp. So that's it. No, actually, <laughs> Elena, is, Elena is part of one of the one of the great days in, uh, well, the great three days in supernatural history is that the end of season eight, we had this incredibly complicated set of sequences that started from outside a church, which was filmed in the horrendous weather and continued and it started out with uh, Elena's character and me tied in a chair for the better part of a day and that carried forward for three days of shooting we actually shot in sequence the the entire ending of season eight oh, which wow. was an extraordinary thing to do three days in a room and it was just massively intense and and uh, so much fun and that was I think you know the weirdest thing was the crew didn't make a sound between takes but for about three days. It was the most intense thing we've ever done. But it was just a really good signifier. I was talking to Jared about this, and he goes, yeah, that was pretty much the time when we were the most together and we were doing something. And it's, it's, the significance was, obviously, the series was supposed to end in season five. Uh, you show Sarah came in and, and did season six, which is a great season, got a load of great standalone episodes. Seven was not very well received. It was a, a single story, it would have been great later on, but that was difficult. And then Jeremy came back and did season eight. And this was the first season where we went back to 
uh, angels and demons, which set up everybody from then on. So everybody here is is a product of that season eight, if you really think about it. It, it, we, right. it carried into this whole new era. It needed a restart. It needed a rejig. And that becomes, I think, the signifier for for where the show really went so eight nine ten as we continued forward became like the most uh, important era i think of, of supernatural and it was just a fantastic time that's the short answer <laughs> no I, I i absolutely agree with you hey adam are you in dublin i'm in dublin yeah Where yeah glass tool oh, um yeah. i got something yeah, man, like, i got something to show you busy over here at the moment mark i didn't even get you a gig I should come over and play with you. Yeah. You know what this is? Who's, whose guitar is that? That's uh, mine. But you see what's in there? Well, see the hate? Oh, look at that. This guitar is uh, a Fender Custom Shop guitar made by John Cruz, and it's from the wood from the Hapney Bridge when they cut it down. No way. Six oh, of these. Wow. Oh, it's, actually, it's actually the wood that I walked across. My dad walked across. His dad walked across. Ooh. That is a piece of Dublin. Wow. That's so cool, cool man. That's so cool. A 203 year old pine. Wow. Wow. Who, who, who gave that to you? Who made that for you? Uh, Fender made that. My wife. There was, remember, they cut the Hapney Bridge down, right? Remember, they yeah, cut it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. You went from being, uh, if you guys don't know, the south side and the north side of Dublin is a pedestrian bridge that goes across. That part of the north side of Dublin was where all the rehearsal rooms and the recording studios were. So every Irish yeah. musician ever played, ever, ever rehearsed, ever did anything in Ireland walked across that bridge on an almost daily basis. The other side of that bridge was a, was a crap hole called Temple Bar which was uh, <laughs> literally one of the dodgiest places in the world to ever be in. It's where and everyone goes when they come to Dublin. because they just Yeah, but now it's the, Silver Lake. They turned it into Silver Lake. So the bridge that went across yeah, yeah, yeah. had, like, had uh, wooden slats across it, and it went from 7,000 people a day crossing it to 27,000 people a day crossing it. So they cut it down, sent it up to Harland and Wolf, rebuilt it, and sent it back. And the, one of the main guys at Fender was up at Harland and Wolf and saw this wood in the corner. So what's that? And they said, that's the Hapey Bridge. Wow. So we took it, took it back to our, uh, took it back to uh, America, and John. They were going to make cabinets like the Edge Deluxe cabinets for Fender. Mm -hmm. He was, and John Cruz was bollocks to that. You know that Rory Gallagher stood on that bridge. Uh, Bill Leonard stood on that bridge, did a video and all that stuff. So he ended up making six of these guitars. Okay. He had a four and a half year waiting list, and he, he ended up leaving the company. So there's only six of those in the world. Wow, which That's is amazing. So cool. That was my wife's birthday present to me. In how did, 2018, how did she get it. Is she, uh, on the list? Is she on the list? I'm a Fender artist as well as many other things, but um, so Billy Sigler is a great friend. But she actually had to get Fender to get a wholesaler to agree to sell back a guitar that they were 50 deep in orders from, and they only ever made six. Wow, so <laughs> I had to wait two and a half years, I didn't get a birthday present, and then suddenly it was like, Oh, here you go. And I was like, Oh my god, because I was told by Fender I couldn't have it. It's like, yeah. sorry, mate. There's nothing we can do. But uh, yeah, I have a lot. Of, I have a lot of Fender stuff. A lot of she pulls some things. That wife of yours. She does. She's, she's pretty uh, amazing. She's, she's top. She's top drawer. She is. So I'm holding um, a piece of good. Dublin. I'm holding <coughs> a piece wow. of Dublin. So it's a good thing. <clears throat> yeah. Love that town. If you've never you, been, you yet, can give me. You can give me. You can. You can give me a proper hold the next time you see me. You can hold I will. It alive, I, I'll <laughs> hold you dearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great here at the moment, man. We're gonna we're here. I don't know if you know New Mark, but my wife's about to have uh twins. Yeah, so, so I do. um congratulations so be balls balls deep in that for the next year. So um yeah, uh, try well, the next 18 years, sorry, and then what the hell is it to, it to bring up the kids? It's like it's, it's the whole lot, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll I will have two birthday candles for you when the time is right. Oh wow, oh, yeah. There you go. August 22nd, man. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just gonna be here for here until the new year and then and then probably head back to LA. We don't really know what the crack is. So I'm sure these these uh, new little treasures will decide a lot of the future. Um but we like we're interested in putting them straight to work, man. You know, twins can make you some serious dollars. <laughs> they can because you can switch them out. You can yeah. switch them out every four hours. You know what I mean? Yeah, get, I get, get, them work. Dish, uh, get you know, the dish, the dish washing and the trash taken out. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, I just did a movie with these two, the tw the twins, and they played twins in the movie, but they they were on, I think, General Hospital or Bold and one one of those. And you know, Haley's got that. You guys definitely. Can, they started working when they were four weeks or something. Something. Really, like Jesus Christ! Yeah. Yeah. He, he's going to retire on the back of his kids. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I mean, if I had two uh, boys, I'd be, I'd, be get, I'd be getting them a Liverpool kids straight away. Um, and they'd be kicking the ball straight up. Girls, yeah, you know, they 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 have the option of football as well. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what goes down. Ah, so, so we've established kids and Dublin are awesome. Jeffrey, what was the craziest day you had of the set of Supernatural? <laughs> uh, craziest day, I'd say it was probably the first day that I showed up. Um, yeah. when I when I got onto that set, I I had made a short film about ten years ago about meeting your future. This it was a it was a guy who met his future self in a dream in the dream he didn't know it was his future self it was just a meeting with this enigmatic character and he was telling him how to be his highest creative self and it was sort of an 1800s fantasy realm short <clears throat> and in it the character the two characters sat on these two thrones in front of a fire and he's explaining what he needs to do to become his highest creative self as an artist well, the first day on set, uh, I'm, I'm, I got to go in by myself. I'm looking around. I look down at the throne. It's the same throne I used for those shorts. We rented these two big thrones for the short, and now it was one, and it felt like a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's so cool, man. I didn't that know that story. Bad. That... Wow. The, short, the short is called Vincent and Lucian. If anybody wants to look, it's uh, it's free on Vimeo. All right, all right. Well, take it out. Uh, anybody else got a got a fun day in the set that they can recall? I think the first I, day was always a real big thing, wasn't it? Huh? She tried to Every kill day. me. She tried oh, to yeah. kill me. <laughs> she shot me with a with a gun by accident. <laughs> Okay, because they wanted me to shoot the gun with my left hand. I'm not left-handed, mm. and it was a it was a it was a revolver. It was really heavy. Like the 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 handle of the gun is really heavy. So I was like, "Can you like you know cock it?" So all I had to do was like shoot it from the hip. I shot it into the drawer. <laughs> scared the shit out of Mark. About 14 <laughs> seconds before it was due in the script. <laughs> <laughs> But there's this there's this great outtake of her. It's a shot on her. And this great outtake. She just bang and it goes off. And I'm like, you just see my head revolve into the camera going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I know you haven't clearly. It was a flintlock too, which made it worse. <laughs> oh really? Oh, and I, it left, definitely left a mark in the furniture. And you know, not not everybody was very happy with me. I was like, that's my other insurance. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's okay. I got shot in the face on that show. They like some what? I think it was Gil or one of them shot me in in this, like this, point blank on camera. And I was like, you're not allowed to point guns at people. Like that's against all the union laws. And they're like, at people, you're a monster. And I'm like, no, I'm a woman. I have four children. <laughs> well, Blanks, you know about that guy who was messing around with yeah. the, with a blank, blank, a blank. Well, you've, got a, you've got a twenty-five foot. You've got a twenty-five foot flame spurt. I mean, you just that's right. You, the well, water, the pressure, the wadding will kill you. Yeah, 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 it was. Uh, wadding will kill you. Whoa. Yeah, the, the actors. Whoa, the the eighty show Voyagers. Voyagers. He he thought blanks were just like caps, and he held. Hey, watch this and. Yeah, but it pushed Dang. the water through his brain. Yeah, what, the, yeah. Best, the best one of all of this is what, what Elena just said, which is brilliant. We did, uh, Charlie Beeson was doing a, an episode, and it, it's one where I have the prophets, the next prophets around. They don't know they're the prophets, and I'm showing Kevin the, what's going to happen to him if he does something wrong. And I, you know, I lift this woman in the air with my hand from a distance and then snap my fingers, and she explodes. They built a $50,000 blood rig that obliterated the set. It was this giant set. It wasn't, it wasn't on our stage. It was an industrial building. And so they built this thing that had about 80 gallons of blood in it and about 40 <laughs> pipes that just explode outwards at, at a given point. Everything's at high pressure. 
So I raised this woman in. The gag was is somehow I didn't have to be in the bloodshot because when it comes around to me, there's almost like a, a cutout of where I haven't been hit with blood. But these 12 actors are absolutely destroyed with 80 gallons of blood. So I was giggling like an idiot. So we did this. It's this amazing shot. I left her 20 feet in the air. I snap my fingers and she explodes. And as I get to, we get to the post-production of it. And I'm going, well, where the hell's the shot? I said, well, we have a problem. I said, what's the problem? He says, well, we can't use it. Standards and practices won't let you explode a woman on television. Oh. If she was a witch or a demon or anything else, we could blow She's a person. <laughs> a person. We were <laughs> that's a killer. So they wasted like 50 or 60 grand's worth of equipment to do a shot. Oh, so there is a, there is a wow. distinction. They're allowed to blow you up because you're a bad person. And shoot you in the face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, uh, I got shot in the head. What was that? Like in, right in the back of the head. Yeah, well, that's that's that's, well, but yeah. that one, see, that was a nice the, person. The, 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 you slightly supernatural. You shoot a person in the head, Adam, but it's like the it's the way that the gun is pointed at you because when they shoot you, they can line it up so the the gun's not actually pointed at yeah, you. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It looks yeah, like yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. and that was the difference. This one, they literally put the barrel of the gun under my chin on camera. I, I'm sure it was Gil McKinney. If 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 he's one of the suspects, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's definitely Gil McKinney. <laughs> Um, they, you know it's because you're Irish. From Texas. You know it's because you're Irish, right? Yeah, probably. That's why. Probably. That's but like we, we, we we're also the Texans are kind our kindred kindred spirits. We have a lot in common. Dave Payton Jones was extremely professional when he was shooting me in the back of the head. I'm sure. I'm sure he <laughs> well, didn't have to go and point it right to the back of my head. I'm, well, and I, really you cool. know, I, I mined the whole gunshot. Remember, there was nothing in it. It was just like. Oh. It's David, I've never seen you with your top button undone and your tie not straight. What's going on? I'm just, you know, this is my relaxed at home look. Wow. <laughs> 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 this is actually a pajama, a pajama onesie. I can just, you, I can zip it off later. It's lovely. I, I, I get this sudden feeling that you wear a wetsuit in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never, I'm never nude. I have jean shorts on at all times. <laughs> Notorial excellence. I, I love that. I love never nude. I love never nude. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, I think we're gonna go to audience questions. Let's go ahead and roll our first one. Uh, right, and here's one from Christy, and she would like to know if you could have the abilities or powers from any character in Supernatural, what would you choose and why? <laughs> I can guarantee you no one ever chooses my, car my character for this. Um, <laughs> the, he was a good he was quite he was table. quite the bookworm. He was quite the reader. The power of reading. <laughs> oh, don't be <laughs> very powerful. Harry, Harry Potter, Frodo, yeah. <laughs> well, as Asmodeus, oh. Asmodeus had a sweet skill set, right? Could you go oh. invisible? Few of them. I was able to flick. Someone could go invisible, right? Yeah, you can see the flick and the pop them. and all that stuff. Yeah, that was nice. I still got to go with flight. I, you know, you got to go with flight. I don't care what anyone says. I like flying, jumping up, flying through the air. Period. Hmm. Well, obviously, making uh, humans explode is off the table, but. Uh... <laughs> Muscle is camera. pretty cool. You make them explode, you just can't show it on camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I stand corrected. Right. That's right. <clears throat> What was the what was the final answer? If you could do it over to have the power to do it over Zoom, it would be quite an interesting uh, Zoom meeting. Make people explode over Zoom. Just over Zoom, yeah. I think the the world would be down by several million people in about ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this year anyway. Probably, probably. So, so we have flight and blowing people up over Zoom. Who's got another one? <laughs> well, I like the flingy thing too. I could do that. My character could do that. It's like. Yeah, you it's, go. Nice. it's just a little flick and then they explode. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. I like just. I think I, I was able to even point at somebody and he exploded. It was a, a bartender or something. It's not. Yeah. It's not the same as like the pull my finger type thing. Christy, thank yeah. you. Fun question. Thanks, Christy. <laughs> uh, what do we have next? 
And here's one from Raylene. Which character death was the hardest to cope with? Mine. Mine. <laughs> yeah, clearly ours. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a theme here, guys. <laughs> well, this, I mean, all of season 12 for me was like, jump to the back of the page. Am I dead yet? Yeah. Am I dead yet? Am I dead? Yeah. Yeah. That was my episode. I got to it. I'm Which like, translates no. to, do I have a job still? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I tell people. Oh, you're, you're sad for I, you. I, 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 because as an actor, you're like, that's unemployment. It's not just death on camera. It's just like, oh, I got to go pound the pavement again. For you know, most yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for some of us, they like to toy with you. They're like, "Kill you, bring you back. Kill you, bring you back. Kill you, bring oh, you back." Believe me, I was two of yeah. those. Too. They, they, they didn't give you a heads up. You literally found out as you read the script. Oh yeah, that's no, it. They don't. Oh wow. Well, my oh, agent wow. told me beforehand. She goes, "Oh, well, this is the one you die in." So, so then I just avoided reading the last two pages until about an hour before we filmed that scene. Um, no, no, it's not over. It's over. I'm trying to change the script. Uh, it's not going to work, dude. He's, they he's cut, gonna, they uh, cut that, but I did a little um, improv at the end of my death, and they cut it out. It was when I was burning, and I just yelled to the heavens. I was like, "Welcome to my I'll world. be back." <laughs> <laughs> there you <laughs> are. Has there ever been an actor? And Mark, you would probably know this. You're a great storyteller. Has there ever been an actor who's just not showed up to their own death? Yes. On a set. Yeah. There's, there's, there's an old rule called the Botchko rule. It's okay. Stephen Bochco, the great, the great writer and, and, and producer. Yeah. And if you look back at the Bochco shows, the first thing I've got to set the scene. If you look back at Bochco shows, look at the psychopaths that they actually hired as actors for most of those shows. Some of the craziest actors you've ever seen. You know, NYPD Boo backwards, like, like yeah, Hill Street, right. all this thing. Right. Yeah, and there's, yeah, yeah. It's all the Bochco rule is you never tell an actor he's going to die until the day he's going to die, especially right. if they've been on the show for a while. So the Bochco rule is they, they're not like, you know, you're going to die this season or whatever, because they had actors that burnt down sets, refused to do the shots. They always have to have a contingency if somebody refuses to do it, because it's happened loads of times. Right. If you think of the bad old days of the 80s in television, when there was a lot of people before they got sober and before they got, they got straight, there were some people that caused absolute chaos. Yeah. By going through it, going, yeah, bang, I'm dead, whatever. You know, they're just refusing to participate. Refusing to do the scene. It's okay. actually called the Bochco rule, and you, you'll come yeah. up against yeah. the Bochco rule in yeah. television. See, I knew Physics to up. defer. I knew to defer to yeah. you. Question. That's amazing. What a great story. Well, yeah. I was yeah. trying to get out of the show for about a year and a half, and, and it was painfully apparent that it was it was time for me to go do something else. As uh, I went from being the smartest character on the show to being possibly one of the dumbest characters that had ever been created in the space of about six months. And it was it was this weird thing where I knew that they knew that I knew, and you know it was just like so. I was able to spend weeks saying goodbye to all my friends, all the crew, everybody that I'd worked with for all this time behind. They were like, "Oh no, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to die." And I'm like, "Trust me, I'm going to die. My my apartment is packed." Tran the greatest thing was transportation. Were like were like uh, 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 beds of transportation. We're like. Drive your car back home. You want to drive back? Drive back home. I said, "Well, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a series regular on the show. I'm, I'm a major cast member." I said, "Like I have to drive myself." They're like, "We'll drive you." So off the books for about two months. Transportation picked me up, took me home, drove me to airports, drove me back every single day, and it never got to Warner Brothers that they were actually doing that. So, I, you know, I, I was well protected, but uh, you, it was the unwritten rule. They couldn't tell me until they told me. Yeah. Right. And, when I knew I had the uh, the ability to have some participation in, in in the ending, which I thought was really fantastic, but uh, absolutely, I feel but like it was a bit of a cluster. It was a bit of a cluster. My thing was it became a sort of weird political thing and got weird. And the hardest mm. thing for me is like my friends all continued to work, and I'm happy for my friends to continue to work. And the reason why I, I cut out of uh, creation gigs and all the rest of that stuff was because I didn't want to be sitting there for an hour and a half every day answering questions that were pertinent to me not being on the show and other people being on the show when people it, all i was i was just happy everybody was working i genuinely you know i'm able to do other things i'm able to do that but my time had come and i'm very i'm very pleased my time had come and then we got into the politics of it and some fun stuff happened which uh, i ended up making t-shirts and paying it back so you know like, i'll be back concept uh, change 
there's there's something that I put in that I was given to put in, and certain powers that be cut it out when I went to go do the ADR. So I knew I knew what you know I knew what was going on and where it was going on. But genuinely, yeah. honestly, now it's a level playing field. There's nobody on Supernatural anymore. So uh, yeah, 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 much, yeah, yeah, much easier concept to talk about the stuff that we love and and our interactions and how we all, we all love each other yeah. love each other because it, it's an extraordinary people don't realize it's an extraordinary thing it's it's a rare show in the context of what people call fandom which we call the supernatural family for a very specific reason because we don't like the word fanatic because fanatic implies something that's not particularly positive but this this yeah. group of people that we get a cause or we do something god forbid anything happens to any of us and we jo we join a cause, and then suddenly there's millions of people make, making it bigger, making it work, making it do something. This show has so much power in that way for good, and the stories and the ways that people are connected to this show, you know, the way we're connected, we all know each other, and it's it, you know, we're all friendly regardless of what what people may think. Um, but the fact is that we see these people coming together to help each other mental health issues physical health issues somehow supernatural has become this sort of safe place for people to associate with and connect you're never alone with the supernatural family i mean people that would go to a convention one first time they've ever gone they make 20 friends they make friends for life etc and i don't think that happens on every show i really don't think it doesn't happen on every show it doesn't no. <laughs> you know, it, was, it, was a, it was a family, right? Everything was a family. This was a family. You didn't have a choice. Because once, you, <laughs> once you've done something with Moose and Squirrel, uh, you know, in the deep end, you know, day one, whoever you're working with, any of you guys, whoever you're working with, day one, when you're dumped in the deep end or you're dumped in with me, or you, it's like you've got to hit the ground running. I mean, you, yeah. you, you're, yeah. in, you're in the trenches and you've got to do it. You've got to show up and you've got to do your best. And that's, I think, the signifier for 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 we love doing it we cared about it and it shows they love watching it they cared about us and it shows and i think that's just a fantastic contract you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah i know it is man it very much so yeah. very much so it is yeah. um and it's, it's like i suppose yeah uh, you know on most shows that you do you kind of you don't get to see everyone after after you finish the show it's like from our perspective what the conventions bring outside of uh, everything you just everything you just said but like you, you get to you get to know the people that you might have worked with not so much i didn't work with them, i didn't work uh, uh with jeff uh but we I, I know them like better than i know some cast members of shows that i've worked on for years because this because of this because of galaxy con because of all the cons and uh yeah. um it just it's it's a i think that's a real breath of fresh air for me in my career that, that i that you maintain those and they become Better friends than 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 friends have in in, in other shows simply by the, the amount of time you spend with them. It's, it's fantastic. And I, I, you already notice how much from a selfish perspective, you already notice how much you missed miss the cons in the last eighteen months and yeah, what you miss about them and who you miss. I, I've yeah, I've known guests that have worked together on shows for years and they weren't close at all, but on the convention in the green rooms right. and at the tables, they yeah. became they discovered, I didn't know you were this cool. Yeah, we never had a chance to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought or you just would have not time. met them on the show because you were yeah. on different seasons or whatever. But like Mark and I, that was the best part about getting on Supernatural. I was like, oh, my buddy Mark. Because Mark and I had known each other from the conventions from years of just yeah. doing conventions wow. from other shows yeah. we've been on. Mm -hmm. Oh, fun. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun. Yeah. You're calling me old, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my fun, Judith. Oh, which day has been your best day in 2021 so far? Today. Okay. That's right. That's exactly right. right. Good day. We made it through. Every day, every day that I'm alive, one more day is my best day. Let's just put yeah. it out. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I think my my last mine's day. I found out I was having twins. I suppose. But uh, uh, so screwed, mate. you are so screwed. <laughs> you are so screwed. <laughs> I mean, listen. I love you dearly, and I. I I know a little of you, and I know your temperament. You're, you're going to be fantastic at it, but you are. Screwed. Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> if I could give you one piece of advice, I have three kids. Um, I'll give yeah. you one. You've got more kids than me, Elena. Uh, please don't take any advice from anybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're all different. They do what they do. They are what they are. When somebody goes, you know what you need to do, you go, oh. yes, thank you very much. And yeah. that's thank, thank thank you. what you were going to do anyway. <laughs> yeah. right? No, that was the best piece of yeah. advice I got when I had. 
Elijah, he'll be 17 tomorrow, him and Mark share a birthday. And my aunt said to me, she's like, just remember, he's your kid. And and that's kind of like your general, that is your through line. This is your kid, your yeah. family, your experience. Right. Yeah. My my that's goddaughters wonderful. are twins and you have a very fun adventure ahead of you. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, yeah. like very nice unique. talking about his God. Unique, it? It? Virgin's talking about sex here. <laughs> hey, I get to be the I get to be the fun, wacky uncle. And, Great. Yeah. When you get to do 24 hours a day for 15, 16 years, we'll talk back. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> yeah, all right. uh, Judith, thank you. Fun question. What do we have next? From Debbie. Ooh, what is Ooh. your all time favorite show? Mine's The Sopranos. I know what David Hayden Jones is. Do you? Yeah. Tell me. Go for the it. Beach, the beach, the beach combers. <laughs> David, <laughs> always, always, <laughs> good <laughs> one, buddy. Good one. Oh my god. Canadian television growing up was oh bless bless our little cotton sock. But look now, Shit's Creek. That's one of my favorites. Oh, Shit's yeah. is great. Brilliant. But I, you got It's got to be like a desert island show, right? Like you get one show on a desert island. Got to have a lot of episodes. The rest of your life. It's got to have a lot of episodes. <laughs> Golden Girls. Oh, that's I can't a nice do Golden I Girls. Can't, I can't do three episodes of Golden Girls back to back at least. Thank you for being a friend. I've traveled down the road. <laughs> if you, if you, if you, like my favorite, show, one of my favorite all-time shows, is obviously, has been The West Wing. You know that, David? Um, yeah. Yes. Um, but but, but like talking, if you're talking about Desert Island shows, you'd have to go with something classic like either Only Fools and Horses or um, <laughs> Faulty Towers or something like that. Ooh, yeah, you need a bit of a laugh. It's, it's so few yeah. episodes, though. I mean, I know. I know. I know. Like 13. I know. What I, it's the only. It's oh, the the TV. It's the only and, TV I own on a uh, box set, and that's the original uh, cast of SCTV, the old sketch yeah, yeah. show in Canada. Because that would keep me so happy. And that's what got me into show business. That is what made me want to go into Canadian sketch comedy, which then pivoted into hopefully an acting career. But which is amazing because you don't really have a fifteen-year box set of Supernatural. <laughs> I'm still trying. Uh, I'm a work in progress, baby. Oh, I, think, I think for myself, it's, it's, it's the journey. It has everything in it. It's got the, it's got the amazing acting, and some of the uh, episodes are just standalone films. Almost, it's got comedy, family. The, 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 I mean, the Sopranos. Golden Girls. Yeah. Oh, Golden Girls. Yeah. <laughs> Where he's come from. Oh, what did you say? Sopranos. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, you, you, when you're talking about when you're talking about originator shows and and later shows and stuff, it, it's you can't really disseminate that much between you know. Sopranos, West Wing, The Wire, Hill Street Blues, all those originators, things that change things in television. Yeah. There's so many of those great shows, even Breaking Bad, whether you like it. Then it becomes down to taste, but you're talking about. Taste, yeah. Exactly. We always that's skip a good point, Mark. Yeah. Over, we skip over the one thing that's amazing is we're on a show that went on for 15 seasons in a in a, 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 a genre, television, that now you'll never do a 22, 23 episode season ever again. It's just not going to happen. So 15 years of like, you know, we've had the ups and the downs and we're talking about, you know, the arcs throughout the, the, the seasons. It's incredible. If you think about that amount of television that's been made and yeah. the amount of people that are connected to it. Uh -huh. I mean, every one of you here, you know, we've all done other things, right? We've all done other things. But what are we recognized for? What is the number one thing that people? Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Which tells sure. you the impact, the worldwide impact. Yeah, and like, and and, and you know, it's, and we've said this, because plans like that, that you know, it's it's, it's a testament to and like I, a load of people that will that that that, that you can no one mentions, like you know, like uh, the, the 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 boys, the the top brass. But the day-to-day -day writer's room to keep that alive for 15 wow. seasons, that's the kind of talent. It's it's a variety in writing. It's having the balls to do episodes like the episode with Baby. What's that called? What's mm -hmm. that one called? Baby. 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 Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, to, to break the mold. To break, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like this. Um, to break the mold like that, that that's just that's talent. And that's what re the real talent lies. Um, I had I probably had 30, 30 some odd writers writing my character over eight right. years or so. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's insane. And it's, it, you know, we saw different people come in and out, go 
on and people become directors and move forwards and do all this stuff. And it's, it's just, it's not going to happen like that again. We're not going to have that thing where uh, you have a convention of television being that amount of episodes and stuff going on for years. You know, if you look at it, what's the most successful of all of those? You've got like, like NCIS probably, a non advertised mm. show that had tens of millions of, of viewers ever since its inception and has been on television forever. But I don't think it has the same impact on culture that Supernatural does. And I think that's, I think we always sell it a bit short because we don't. Or, like to, or to your point, subculture. And I, I'm not, not to diminish the, the culture of subculture, but like you have this incredible diaspora of. Yep. of of this family that have created this own side project. That's what I like about the cons too, is like, we're troubadours again. We're almost like old theater folk going from, you know, market to market. And that's what I love about this yeah. side, this side, this side job that is conventions. I have a, I have a thing that I, I, I said a lot, you know, over the years at conventions. And when I was talking to people who'd never done conventions before, right? They've ne the, the actors who'd never experienced this before. Yeah. What I'm saying is, like, remember, a lot of us come from live theater or live performance. Yeah. A lot of us come yeah. from that. And, and even if you don't, we do understand it. So when you perform, when you, you're on a stage, you know, I'm at Croke Park, I've been for you two in, in, in 87, they breathe, I breathe. You know what I mean? It's that, that unconditional organic bond between yourself yeah. and and this thing, we, we, you know, you, you do a stage play and you can hear gasps and you can hear, you know, you can see the eyes of people there, even though it, it blends. But it's just you're lifted on this energy of an audience. Yeah. And when, so we make television with 150 of our friends, right? <laughs> and and we all congratulate ourselves on the last take or whatever it was that was done because it kind of felt good. But we're not there yeah, with, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not with our audience when they experience it. Yeah. So I always, yeah. I always pitch that going to a convention was completing that circle. Doing this. I, I told it. I told the exact same story at the convention, Mark. I think that's exactly it. That's the nail on the head stuff, especially because when you talk about the feeling of the energy of a crowd, you can feel it from night to night. If you do a hundred performances of a play, you can you remember the ninety fourth one or the sixty fifth one that was that special night when everyone felt it on stage and the audience were particularly on fire and it's like, wow you can feel that just and you feel that with these cons and exactly what you said it's bringing this thing full circle and it gives you that thing that you don't have with other shows of like genuine questions year after year about stuff you i did six episodes and people ask me stuff that i that, that still ask me after so many years or three years or whatever four years uh, stuff that i have never been asked and i think that's just it's really cool it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a love thing though i mean it's like jeff you know this it's like you know, have you performed in many different arenas and, 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 and you know, cross with music and everything else. This it's you can't explain it. There's a there's yeah. a give a give and a take that doesn't exist in any other thing but with an audience. Mm -hmm. It's, it's true, an organic, yeah. it changes everything you do, right? It's I mean, true. what's your experience of it? You I mean you got jumped into it and and then you go straight out onto the circuit and it must yeah. have been my uh my fr the first convention, uh they were like, Okay, you're up. I'm like, what do you mean who up? Me, just me, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, go." It was Richard Spate, and I had a, I think it was a forty-five minute slot, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, just me?" <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah. like, "What am I going to say for forty-five minutes?" He said, "No, no, man, just you get out there. They'll ask some questions and tell some stories. Don't worry about it." And he was right. Like, as soon as I got on that stage, and they were like this, it was like, "Oh, that's right. I'm a showman. I can do this. I can like tell stories. I can." And the energy that they give back. You're right, Mark. It was like, unlike any other uh, medium I, I, I've ever done is these conventions. And it does feel like a show. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. But that's and why then we, we all vibe off each other too, you know? Like when we yeah. can, like I said, like Mark and I have known each other for years just from doing shows that we weren't even on together. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you, you know, create bonds and then people are like, oh, you know, and it's a, it's, yeah, it's our version of a tour and it's just something, yeah. it's so nice. But that that's we, the like, reason we do it, that. right, Elena? That's the reason yeah. why we do it. We do it for yeah. that connection, right? And it's nice Absolutely. because like, especially before, even, I'll even give uh, like to social media, but especially these conventions before we would do, uh, say, a guest star recurring something. And it feel it would feel like you just do it into the void, you know. Right. It comes in, it goes. Your family maybe they call you and say, "Nice job." This now you have a real connection, and you get to witness how your performance has affected your audience on a massive level. It's and they'll remind you. Yeah, 
I, I liken it to you know going out into the lobby of a theater after you've done a play, but there's thousands of people. Yeah. 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 See the library bar. It's yeah. All Fuck, I'd love to do a play again. I'm, I, I, no, I was just, I was just for yeah, I'm like Jones in for some theater, man. Live performance again. Yeah, so, I was offered to play. I was offered something. to play for, in November to start to September, October, rehearsing September and doing it for November, uh, October, November, to end into December. And I was like, fuck, gonna, my twins will be a month old at that point. Is that too much of a commitment? <laughs> no. So I, I, I turned it down, but I'm kind of regretting it. Kind no, of regretting it. Listen, the, the trouble is, is that you don't know. You don't know what your kids are going to do. You don't exactly, know yeah. Let's just find so, out. Find out. Uh, you'll yeah, actually you love to bail. That's the, the truth of it is you'd love to run away and do a play. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's the whole oh, it's the whole uh, Shakespeare's canon, maybe today. Like uh, the play is going on all day. Like this is a, it's a triple header. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're doing Lear in the morning. And then we're here. Well, you know, you know, you know, my dad was in the RSC, and that's and in those days they would do three plays on a tour. Oh, yeah, the rep theater, man. It's like if you've ever watched one of the greatest films ever made is The Dresser. Not the new yeah. one, the original The Dresser yeah. with, with Tom Courtney and Albert Finney. It's one of the greatest films of all time. Stop it! Stop it! Finney, Finney is just yeah. amazing. Oh, oh, Jeff's back. There you go. Sorry, my battery died. Oh, uh, no worries. No worries. Well, Debbie, thank you for your question. And GalaxyCon viewers. Good, before you go, Adam, you want to say... Uh, you want to you want to take us out and give give him a thank you. Are we done? Well, I was about to say. Any final words for our audience? There you go. Whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever you guys want to say. So the floor is yours. I've I've got something I'd like to share and and announce that. Uh, uh, I did a painting that I think some of you might be interested in, uh, and I've, I've made prints that are going to be available starting Monday. Has it got boobs? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm going to show you. See you, oh, you. <coughs> oh, oh, my. Nice. Uh, oh, wow. Well done. That's Sweet. Gorgeous. Oh, that's oh, dope, man. It's, it's life size. It's life size. Yeah. Who, who is that, Jeff? Uh, I don't know. It's just some guy I saw on the subway. He was pretty pretty. <laughs> He's beautiful. He kept, he kept looking at me. <laughs> and then I did, that's awesome. Uh, Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. And the prints are all hand embellished with gold leaf, and they all have. Uh, they're all. They're all originals because I've. I've highlighted the face. Would those be but the prints? The, uh, yeah, the gold leaf is uh, makes the eyes glow when the lights yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, nice. That's cool, man. That's dope. They're gonna, they're gonna be available starting Monday. Sweet. Um, well done, dude. And, and where and where are they available at? Oh, on my social medias, like the uh, I'll put it on Twitter and Instagram, and then okay. you'll, you'll be able to buy them from my website. Okay, JeffreyVincentFreeze.com. There you go, there you go. Uh, anything else from uh from our guests? Listen, um, hey, listen. The most important things here is uh. We obviously know each other. We could do this for days. We could we we could hang out and do this stuff for days. And we just want to we just want to thank you all for showing up. We know it's been an incredibly difficult year for so many people, and we just sure. hope you're safe and well, and your families are safe and well, and you're doing whatever it takes to keep it that way. And you know, we feel like we're slowly emerging from this this insane vacuum that we've been in. And we just we we just we we love you all. We really appreciate you showing up for this. We will try to show up for you guys wherever we can, you know, because yeah, yeah. this is special to us at, 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 a, at a really base level. And and I just want to say, like, you know, hold on tight to each other uh, and, and look after each other. It's been a very, very rough time. And uh, just, you know, it's, it's a time for love. It's a time for sharing, a time for caring, and a, a time for love. And we love you guys very, very much. And we love what you do and, and how you support us and, and what you do for us and how you help each other is actually the most remarkable yeah. thing. And we want to thank you for, for, for letting us be part of your part of the Supernatural family. And we enjoy you guys so much. Anyone want to add something? I would just end their generosity and, and honestly keeping me creative through, through stuff like uh, Cameo and feeling connected, you know, that people have been 
people have been so kind in helping me believe in me when I wasn't couldn't believe. You know, it's weird to have your your job taken away from you. You know, yeah. it's yeah. Uh, so we can't forget about that. So I've been so grateful to the audience and to people like you, Patty, and and GalaxyCon for letting us stay connected in this virtual world. Um, it's been a blessing, and it's honestly kept my mental health in check yeah. on, on those lonely nights. Absolutely. You know, truly, yeah, Hello? absolutely, absolutely. Gentlemen and lady, it has been my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us, and thank you for your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care, and please remember, smiles are free, so spend them often. <laughs>